Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, please tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. You might also look at our t-shirts. Ta-da! Those are our t-shirts. Uh, to order a t-shirt or look at the pictures of them or anything like that, just go to pacificmike.com. That's a regular internet site, and that's our, that's our website. Just pacificmike.com. It'll take you there. You can tap on little things that says t-shirts and look at them. We will be getting more t-shirts from time to time, different designs and things. I mean, if you get sick of a picture of me, we'll do some pictures without me. Okay. Um, what else? I think that's about all. I, I wanted to mention that next month, December, will be uh, Chopper Fest is coming up. That's on the 11th, I believe. December the 11th. I'm almost positive as to you. Anyway, check me on the, on, the, on the internet. But Chopper Fest in Ventura, California. Magnificent show at the beach. It's never too cold. It's always sunny. I don't to say enough things about it. And, of course, it's a tribute to the late, great David Mann from Easy Rider magazine fame. David was quite a guy. Anyway, that's, that's what will be happening in December. So we're looking forward to that. Um, I'm trying to catch up because we, we've been getting behind on our videos, and I'm trying to catch up a bit. Let's see, what else do I need to say? I was just standing out here. And I was wiping down my new horn. Wait a minute. That's not a horn. It looks like a horn. Those of you who've been following our channel um, will remember my good buddy, Jim. Jim is uh, the big guy that owns that uh, Evo Stroker we put together. And Jim decided he'd really like to have a way of cooling his motor. Now, his motor doesn't really get hot, but a lot of today's motors do. Shovel heads run a little warm, and we're running in traffic now a lot more than we used to. You know, these things are air-cooled, and the only way they get air over them usually is with forward motion. Uh, one of the reasons they still allow lane splitting in California is because these motors are air-cooled. And sitting still in traffic, especially in the summertime, they get really hot. Well, so my buddy Jim decided he'd like to build a, build a fan. And that's what he did. So now at this point, they're just in prototype stage. And I'm really thrilled and feel real privileged that he sent me one to try out on my bike. So... I said, well, that's a great idea. I'll put it on the way he suggested with his supplied stuff. And, of course, it wouldn't fit my bike because my bike is, it's a Mike original. There's only one like it and nothing is in the normal spots or normal parts or anything else. So I had to make a bracket to mount it. Now, he puts them in, in place of like an FX horn or, and that's what this is, is a horn cover. And he made all these parts to match. That This is all an electric cooling fan to blow air over the cylinders. It will either blow it over the cylinders or suck it back across the cylinders. We're still experimenting, seeing what makes the, the biggest effect. Um, I also, because he did this, I went out and bought a laser thermometer. So I can pinpoint on the heads and cylinders where the temperatures are, what they are, and, and that, the, that the, the fan is cooling or is not cooling. Now, he's making them so that they will go on or off with a uh, thermostat, or you can hook it up with a switch. This one is with a switch. And, of course, for my application, I had to move the whole thing 90 degrees so I could get to the switch and all that thing sort of thing. Um, which brings up another point of what I had to deal with is I've, for years and years, I've had a, a starter button down here. 
Now, actually, it was on this piece here. And this piece went right on top of the motor mount. This is a two-piece motor mount. It's one of those you can buy from just about any supplier for a shovel head. And I put this on my bike years and years ago and thought I could never break that big, thick, heavy thing. And I broke this bottom piece here about 10 years ago. And my buddy Junior and I made a new one out of a hunk of sta stainless that was laying on his shop floor in the middle of the night. And like I said, it was about 10 years ago, and it still seems to be hanging in there pretty good. So I guess we did a good job. So what I did is I made a bracket to sit on top of that mount. And what I did is I took a piece of cardboard, and I made myself a template. And I made this little thing. And let's see, my, my fuel line is going to go roughly through here uh, because the petcock is over here, and I have a big, beefy pingle petcock on the bike. So I had to do all that stuff and figure out where I was going to put that starter button again, and that's what I did is make this bracket. And then I did my usual paint job and stick it in the oven, and there it is, shiny and black and on there. I could take this all apart to show everybody what I did, but basically... You can see it from here. Um, this is a real long 3 ace bolt here. And looking for a way to mount it, I went through my uh, boxes of spacers in my parts room, and there was one that was exactly the right length and chromed as well. It looks like that's what that was intended for. So that's what I did. I put that on there, and there it is. Now, I've had a lot of people over the last couple of years write in with with difficulties they're having with their electric starters. Um, personally, I believe one of the biggest problems with elect electric starters is all the circuitry that goes to them. Something that for myself, I just eliminate. If I eliminate it, it can't give me a problem. It's not there. Um, the way the factory does it is they have a start, or they have, let's start up at the top. They have a starter button that's linked to the kill switch, and then it goes down along the handlebar, down to here, and through everything, and ends up going to a relay. From the relay, it goes to the, to the solenoid. You've got solenoid is really the proper way to say it. But that's how all of those things relate. And any one of those things can go bad. Usually the starter relay is the first thing. I shouldn't say that on the, on the shovel heads. From the 70s, the button used to be the first thing to go. Um, I remember in 1979, we were on a trip up in Canada. In Stanley Park, the starter button went out. And the only way I could start the motor was, because I didn't have a Kickstarter on it at the time, but the only way I could start it was to, to uh, jump the starter relay which was mounted on the bottom of the battery box. I just decided one day I'd had it with all of that stuff, and I really didn't need it. So I got a 20-amp automotive starter button, and I ran one wire to the battery and one wire to the solenoid, solenoid. And there is one little, there's three posts on the solenoid. The big ones for the battery cables and the, and the little one where you come in off of the starter relay, and that's what energizes this solenoid. This thing is very, very voltage sensitive. It likes a lot of juice, so it really slams that drive home. That's the most important thing. That keeps you from burning up the whole system. So by putting that starter button on with two wires, one to the battery with a fuse, and one to the solenoid, End of problem. And I get, well, I just replaced this solenoid a while back. I mean, yeah, I did replace this. But it, the one I replaced had been there over 20 years. That's a pretty good long life for any electrical part. Anyway, so I just wanted to mention that. That's why I did that, and that's why I made this whole big bracket so that I could mount the, the fan that Jim made and I can experiment with it, but I had to make this new mount that would hold the starter button too. And that's basically it. 
And that's what I wanted to tell you about today. Oh, the wind is blowing. It's been cold. And I don't deal real well with the uh, season changes like I used to. I mean, when it gets cold, I get cold. So anyway, I think that pretty much covers it. I don't know what else I can do, except I want to report back on this. I mean, I want to be able to show, and I will. What we'll do is once I get this going, which all I've got left now is to wire it up. Well, once I get this going and I can take some temperature readings on it, I got to report back to Jim and then I'll report back to you too. And we can see if this is a good idea. We don't know if this is going to become a product or not. This is just in the prototyping stage. And I might add, Jim did an absolutely magnificent job of building these. They're really, really inoffensive, pretty, quality everything. I love it. I mean, that's, I'm really, I've, I'm, I'm thrilled to be someone chosen to give it a try. This bike has been my test bench for products for over 40 years. Okay, so we will be talking soon. Hopefully I'll see you out on the road. That's exactly what I mean. I'll see you out on the road.